<laughs> All right. So, hey, let's start with the sound check. Can you guys hear me okay? All right, so I guess we'll just get right into it. I'm not going to worry about anybody hearing me or seeing me at the moment. Uh, although you could, how about give me some thumbs up if you hear me, the people that are watching. Or just give me a comment right in there that the sound's good or the, the video's good. In fact, you know what? I just realized I need to turn on some lights. Here, if you haven't been in before, uh, so look, Tom here, Flip Anything USA. Uh, so on my channel, I show people how I've made money in real estate, uh, and my eyes are going to hell here a little bit. Okay, sounds good. That's good, man. Hey, so I'm gonna, I'll give you guys a quick tour of my studio. Take a look. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Let me see here. Ah, I got all kinds of lights. I got all kinds of stuff here. I got cranes. I got all motion control. I got all kinds of crazy stuff I don't use. I use my phone. I got the best cameras you can imagine, and I use my phone because it's easy. Uh, but these, these are my lights, and i got to turn on some lights. It'll make it look a little better. You see all these lights over here? Check it out. See up here? That one's off, this one's on, and then i got some that I'm facing that are on. Uh, so I don't do much stuff in the studio, as you know. I'm usually in the field, because I'm usually playing with real deals because that's what I think is the most important. A lot of people criticize me because I don't have the slickest operation and I don't have a beautiful set behind me. But that's because I'm usually really making deals, okay? And I'm not just giving you a bunch of BS. Uh, so today I'm gonna tell you guys some stuff about, uh, I really, I got a really, really great important deal that I wanna tell you about. And let me frame this up while I'm talking. So. Got kind of a crappy little crane here too. All right, so okay, and you can see here. Just see, see, I got a TV set over here, so I can kind of, so it's easier for me to read and answer questions. Now this ain't all about answering questions. I'm going to tell you a story because it's got, a, it's really, really important for a lot of reasons. Uh, but first of all, first thing I want to tell you is I've been getting a lot of flack about, not a lot of flack. I can't say it a lot of flack, but people ask me. Why do I go in there and criticize Meet Kevin? Well, I don't criticize Meet Kevin. I criticize his advice. Grant Cardone, same thing. I criticize bad, misleading advice, I think. Uh, Chris Crone, same thing. I've only looked at one of his videos. I don't know all that much about the guy, but I didn't like his, his how to make a thousand bucks or whatever the hell that thing was he talked about. It really went nowhere. Uh, it kept being link below, link below. And a lot of times that's all these guys are about is link below, link below. No details, no facts, no real good information. And that's the problem I have. I have nothing against the guys personally. I don't know any of them. Uh, but I, I do criticize shitty advice when I see it. I, I can't help it. I, you know, it's just, I don't think it's fair. And, and I'll tell you the reason I say it's not fair. It's because if somebody trusts somebody's advice and it's bad advice, you know, if you're already a millionaire giving bad advice, that's the worst crime in the world to me because you're taking people that, that, that look up to you and trust your advice and may do something that'll screw them up for the next 10 years. And I can't think of anything worse than, than to do that because it undermines, and I'm not saying these guys do it, but I feel strongly that there are people that, that may be exactly the result that happens. Uh, so I'm going to share with you a little bit about a deal I just, well, it's not that I just did, but I just walked through. So I make money in real estate, okay? And that's what I do is I show people what I've done and how I do it uh, to the best that I can. Uh, and because I think it matters that you know that the person talk to, talking to you, I'm not dealing in theory, okay? This is real. This isn't a hypothetical thing. I'm showing you real deals that I've done. Stuff that I'm in the process of doing, things that I've done, and the details of how I made the money when I did do it. 
uh, yeah, I have Instagram. Join my Instagram. You know what? Here's what's funny. My channel's really blown up. I mean, I went from about 3,000 subscribers, it took a couple of years to get there, to all of a sudden I got, like, probably have 10,000 today. And this happened in just a few weeks. And finally, you know, people discovered the content and people are going, gee, I never heard of anybody really talk about facts and what's really happening and how it's done. And so I'm getting a big following fast. And that goes back to Grant Cardone, meet Kevin, Chris Crone, and Stephen, Stephen Graham, Stephen Graham. There's a lot of people that watch those guys that are hungry for information, serious information about making deals. They want to make profit. And that's what I want. I want people, I always say I have the smartest audience. You know, there's always going to be some doofus that comes in and asks a ridiculous question or, you know, and sometimes I feel like it's a 12 year old on his dad's computer. And you know, whatever, I don't care. But all I really care about is people that really want to make money. And because I've been doing this since I was 19 years old, and I wasn't a dumb guy, I was a smart guy. I was a smart guy when I was, when I was 19. And I'm just a lot wiser now through all my experience. So let's talk about, uh, okay, so I gotta give a background so people know that I, at least I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that I know what I'm doing before I start. Uh, and now I'm going to get into some details that will make that more easy uh, for you to understand why. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to tell you about a property I bought. This was a really, really cool deal. So first I have to give you the setup on exactly what I had. And now keep in mind, when we're done here, I'm going to make another video. I already have it shot. I'm going to show you another video that's going to show you the actual restaurant. That's going to just show you exactly what I'm talking about. But for now, I'm going to kind of do what, I'm, what, I, what I can do here is what I can't do in the field. And I'm going to do in the field what I can't do here in the studio. So... Let's make sure you got this clear. So basically what I have is, is uh, here's a street, okay? And I bought a restaurant, okay? The restaurant is here, big old parking lot, like that, okay? And then behind the parking lot is another huge property that went to another street. So this is a street, this is a street, okay? This is a top view, okay? To be clear, this is a top view. We're looking down, so you have the proper perspective. Here's the street, okay. Uh, in fact, there's a, a Sonic restaurant, a Sonic here. There's a car wash here, kind of here. And then this is a huge, okay, I'll just write here, huge retirement, uh, retirement home. Okay, I, I own next to this restaurant, I'll just call this rest, okay, for restaurant. This is parking back here. And this is the actual building. Okay, and this is like a patio on the restaurant. Okay, that's a patio. So I own, next to this restaurant, I own a lot a house, and this is another street, okay? Uh, and then these are, these are other houses here, okay? Then uh, I own another house here, and I own another house here, and this is another street. So I own four properties, okay? I own a house here, house here, and a house here, and I still actually own one of these houses, uh, maybe two. And this is a lot. I bought these properties. You, talk, you know about my real estate barbell, which is you know clusters of property around the homes that I around the home that I live in, and clusters of property that I buy around the uh, you know my work. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to tell you how I got this restroom this, or this restroom restaurant. Uh, it, the reason I like this, and I want to talk to you about this deal, is because it encompasses the following. It encompasses a low down payment. It encompasses seller financing. It encompasses networking. Uh, it encompasses me giving a referral fee, a, fee, a referral fee, paying somebody a commission for the referral. Uh, and then finally it gets back down to cash flow, immediate cash flow coming in. And it gets to the fact that when I sold it, I had the financing in place so it was very easy for the next person to buy it from me. 
It also includes, it also includes me making not just a profit, but it, it included me being able to, like I said, have the financing set up immediately, and I was selling it in a crisis, okay? I bought this around 2006 or 2007, okay? Things were, weren't super hot, but they were doing well, and then we hit that big bank crisis in 2009. So back up to the story. It encompasses all those things. Now let me lay it down how this happened. And by the way, if you enjoy what you're watching, subscribe, subscribe. You can always unsubscribe another time. I promise you, you're going to be glad. You're going to find this to be one of the most informative channels you ever see because I've done all this stuff and I don't mind sharing it in detail. So let's talk about, oh, also, I've got to plug the book. Now you guys might think I'm getting rich selling a $10 book, but it's, uh, the, the money I make from this is, <laughs> is very insignificant. Wake up and smell the real estate. It's a bestseller on Amazon and Kindle. I suggest you get the Kindle or get both. A lot of people get both. Anyhow, that being said, get it, don't get it, I don't care. I only want people that want to learn and make money, okay? Anybody else, just you can enjoy it or not. I don't care. So back to the deal. If you followed me correctly, here's my restaurant that I bought. Well, before I bought this restaurant, I bought, I bought this house for $105,000 here. I sold that house for $430. I mean, this isn't why I intended to do this. But I bought this house for $105,000. I sold it for... Uh, okay, let me back up. I bought this house for $105,000, and I sold it for $430,000. Okay? So I made, whatever, $300,000 on that house. I, I made, on average, that much on most of those, probably. But this is where it started. I bought this house first. And then that neighbor told me that this house was for sale. And guess what? I made, ran over there and I bought that house. Then this house came up for sale. And I was selling another house that I had a tenant going to move out of. Well, I bought this house. It wasn't the best deal, but I thought, you know what? I like it. I want it. And this also, I like this street. So I bought this house and it came with this lot. It was a very good deal. This tenant would always go over to this Mexican restaurant and she would eat regularly. She'd run over and she would just eat, okay? So my tenant also knows that I am an avid real estate investor and they know, my, all my tenants know. You, you got a question about real estate, call me, I'll help you. But not only that, if you got a piece of real estate you know about, let me know. And if I buy it, I'll give you a referral fee, okay? And this is real important, if you're just watching this, Subscribe, subscribe, because I got some really, really great stuff coming that's going to help you make money. I don't care. Listen, I got all kinds of the people watching me that, you know, are, are with big outfits that, 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 you know, we buy houses and different things like that. And, and, you know, there's so many different names like that that watch, and that's fine. But continue listening, but subscribe, because great stuff coming in the future. Another app you're not going to believe that I've discovered. I'm going to share with you. So long story short, this gal, Kim was her name, lived in here. She comes over to go eat. Well, she's been eating there forever. And believe me, this building is, a, is just a crappy restaurant. I mean, to be honest, it'd been there for 40 years. I remember eating there 20 years ago, and it was the same. I mean, it just had never changed. Uh, and anyways, they were shutting down. The old man that ran the place was getting ill, and he, uh, he, he had to close up. And so I bought this building. She came over and said, hey, Tom, I went next door. And the building, they said there was a note on the door saying we're closed and we're selling the property. Thanks for all the years of business or something like that. She called me as soon as she went over to get her lunch and found that note. I stopped everything I was doing and drove straight to that property, okay? And remember, I buy everything's around me. That's why I don't buy stuff out of, out of my own city. I don't really do much running around like that out of state stuff unless it's somewhere where I've already lived. Well, I go there, I boom, I take the note, I call immediately, I get a hold of the agent that they intend to list the property with, and, and the agent picked up. I said, hey, I'll buy it, I'll buy it, let's get together. See, I didn't say how much I just said, let's get together. I want to buy it. Well, we got together. They wanted $750,000. Maybe they wanted $900,000. I can't remember. Anyways, I said, let's have a meeting with the, with the sellers. I sat down with them. I said, look, I'm a little bit tight on money, but I want to buy it. If you own or finance it, 
you know, how long can you carry it for? Owner financing worked just fine. In fact, I think if I remember correctly, uh, it was a divorced couple that owned the property and they were both happy just to have an income coming in. So what I did was I structured the deal such that I paid, okay, and this is like the details that I talk about that are so important that often get overlooked. I paid $750,000, okay? And I put, uh, and I may be off five or 10 grand, okay? This has been 10 years, okay? I don't ever want anybody to accuse me of lying. Uh, 750,000, okay? I put 50,000 down, and they carried the balance of 700,000. For some reason, I think it's 720,000, but for the sake of the example, it's 700,000. Well, here's the best deal. I got him to carry that note at 3, 3%, okay? 3%. The payment was only $2,100, okay? That's nearly nothing for a $700,000 loan. That was 3%. I mean, 3%, that's $21,000 a year. And I was paying, I think, $2,100 a month. So I was barely even paying on the principal. And never be afraid of that. N never be afraid to have a loan for 10 years that's interest only. That's the most beautiful thing in the world because your payments guarantee you that you <laughs> they can't be any lower than they are other than just getting the interest lowered. So very, very important. Don't ever be afraid of interest only. Because in 10 years, if you bought it right, it's worth more than you paid for it the day you bought it, which is what I teach you. The other thing is, is when you get through tough times, you can weather tough times because you are paying the bare minimum. Very, very important. So now, so here I bought this restaurant for $750,000, $50,000 down. Now let me tell you how horrible this restaurant was, and you're gonna hear it in my other video tomorrow. This restaurant was so filthy, so disgusting, that when you walked in, it had carpet, it had, car I'm on the industrial carpet right now, that's what they had. Your feet would stick to the carpet. Now, if you can imagine a restaurant so dirty that your feet would stick to the carpet, that's how bad this was, okay? Also, uh, the, uh, gosh, whatever, anybody, it, but it was a local, what was beautiful about this property is it's a bar and a restaurant in the middle of a pretty affluent neighborhood hard to find, right? You have to get off the main drag to get to these places, or you go to where there's a, you know, a, a BJ's and a, a, a Jim's and a, you know, a whatever, you know, all the different restaurants that are around that are like that, you know. This was all by itself in the neighborhood. You could walk to it from apartments. You could, it was an awesome location. The day I bought it for 750, I figured it was worth a million 250. I was gonna do, put a little money in it, not much, just clean it up, and that's what I did. And you'll see that in the video I put out tomorrow. But I cleaned it up, I, you know, I just cleaned it up. I just really, really cleaned it up. And while I was cleaning it up, it wasn't presentable, right? So I fenced in the lot here, the, this huge retirement home that I referred to being back here, well, it was just being built. Well, this is what's important. You gotta know value when you see it. When you have a property like that, that's adjacent to where there's construction going on, they wanna stage their stuff. So this worked out beautiful because we were contiguous back here, okay? My lot was connected, it had a property line, but we were connected. Well, the, the guy that was building this, this retirement home, this is a 130-unit retirement facility. It's got a cafeteria. It's got uh, a lockdown for the Alzheimer's patients and stuff like that. It was a big, big, it was a $17 million project. Well, he came to me and he says, hey, uh, I can't remember if I came to him or he came to me, but either way, we got together and I made a deal where I rented him the parking lot while I was cleaning up the building and he gave me either 5,000 or 5,500. I think it was $5,500 a month, but we'll just say 5,000. So right off the bat, I was getting $60,000 a year just for the lot, okay? While I'm getting that 60,000, I'm paying uh, a $2,100 a month payment, right? So we got roughly 15,000, so I'm making $45,000. Now, let's not forget taxes. Taxes took at least, you know, 10 grand of that. So. 
Uh, so what do we have? 60, you know, minus 15, 45, take another 10. I'm making $3,000 a month day one, just immediately from the time I got that rented, which was, was immediately in this case. It's not always going to be that way, but that's what it was. So the money that I'm making, at the end of that year, I'd almost got my down payment back on what I paid for the whole thing. But, the, you know, I had that money. But the best part about that money was is I was using that money to just continue to clean up and fix up the place. Meanwhile, I'm in no rush. I don't want to be in the restaurant business. I have no desire to be in the restaurant business. But I got 60000 a year off this for about, I think it was over a year, uh, maybe a year and a half. Okay, and there's another lesson here. This is something you got to re- see. I'm remembering this stuff as we go along. Well, this had a bar, right? This was a bar and restaurant. And the rules are different in every state. But when a bar shuts down, they only have... Uh, about two years to reestablish liquor sales again. In other words, if a bar shuts down, somebody can move in and start selling liquor. That's one of the, the beauties of it. It's already been established that it has the right to sell liquor from this location. Well, that was starting to, that was going to expire in two years. And so when I got to being a year and a half along, I thought, okay, good, he's wrapping up. I'm going to rent this restaurant out. Everything's going to be beautiful. Well, that's when the big bank crisis happened, right? I mean, the big bailout, just as Bush was going out, he, you know, he, he did a $400 billion bailout. I can't remember the numbers exactly, but everything went to hell. The banks just dried up. Restaurant business is a very tough business, and they weren't loaning money. They weren't going to help any restaurant expand or change locations. It's a very, very tough business. And so all of a sudden, everything went to hell. But because I bought it under market, it wasn't killing me to hold it. It was only costing me $2,100 a month. Uh, Now, what got me, what hurt me is this, is I told you you have 24 months, right? 24 months, okay? Now, this is to reestablish liquor sales. Um, And what happened was, I had burned up 18 months of that, so I thought. It turned out that the bar, they had, their liquor license had expired three months before I bought the property. So this 18 months was really 21 months, okay? So now I am three months away from losing the right to sell alcohol out of that building and bank crisis. So what do you think I did? I went and got a liquor license and I opened the damn bar. (laughs) I mean, it was fun, but it was like living in the Jerry Springer show, okay? It sucked. I had, so you run down and you know, you gotta have a clean record and I have all that stuff. And so actually, the guy that worked for me initially did it, got the the liquor, he's my general manager of another property I own, another business I own. So we got the, the, the liquor license, we opened it up, I, I, I called it the bar or something very simple. But all I did that for was to reestablish liquor sales so that I could close again and have another 24 months. And that's what I ended up doing. I, I had the bar open up until I put it back up for sale. And then I found a great group, uh, partners that you know really know how to run a restaurant, really know what they're doing. And I, because the other thing is, is I had to fight the neighborhood a little bit because I had live music outside and there was a couple of people screaming about that, even though it didn't bother anybody. In fact, I ended up, I don't want to discourage you, but I ended up having to fight this quite a bit. I called the city out and the city have these, these, uh, I don't know, these audio devices that measure the decibels. And the people that were complaining about the music were just full of crap. There was no problem with the music. In fact, you could have the decibel meter at their, at their, property and the music didn't even hardly activate it at all it was louder when a car drove by my restaurant than it was from the music the the sound of a car going down the road was far higher than my music so anyways the city said tom have music no problem so when i sold the business i had a a, a bar reestablished i had and my bar was worth nothing because believe me i didn't run it very well uh that i have a lot of respect for people that run restaurants and bar they got to constantly watch. Everybody's a thief. You know, your bartender's over poor for, for tips. 
uh, you know, people take food, people, you know, people take money. Uh, and I'm not saying I had any of those issues, but I had some of those issues, okay? I'll just say nothing against. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I met a lot of fun people, uh, but I'll never, ever do that again. Uh, but I, so when I sold the property, the beauty was, is even though restaurateurs don't have the greatest reputation with banks, and nothing against the guys that I sold it to, but this was a fantastic opportunity. So I ended up selling the property for, I think, 930000 Now, that's quite a bit less than the than the million two that I thought I was going to sell this for, but that's because I had this banking crisis come out, just like this coronavirus, right? I bought several houses in the last six months. I'm not going to lose money on any of them. And the reason is because I bought so far below market value the day that I bought it. Same goes for this restaurant deal. So that's why I say there's so many important lessons within this deal that I want you to understand and know about, because one is buying it right, buying it under market, getting it owner finance, getting a low down payment, 50,000 was a relatively small amount of money to put down on something like that. Normally you'd put at least 25% down as an investor. So, so a low down payment, very, very low mortgage, seller financing. That allowed me to finance it, basically just hand it to the next guy. They had to put 200,000 down to buy it from me, roughly, maybe a little less, 180. But these are all super important lessons and why you, you got to be very careful buying right now. You know, we're in the middle. We don't know where, where the fallout with this COVID is. I guarantee, you know, I just did a thing with Phil Pustajovsky criticizing or critiquing. I don't want to say criticizing. I think he's generally a decent guy, uh, but I disagreed with him on values going up. I don't think they're going up. Values are going down. Uh, and so look, if you're just watching, subscribe, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can always unsubscribe, but you're going to get nothing but <laughs> real real estate deals. And, and, you know, I, I mentioned, uh, you know, Grant Cardone, meet Kevin and Stephen Graham and Chris Crone. That's one of the things people complain most about is they lack details on their profits, or, you know, or they don't show any profits realized at all. So I only show profits. I only get into the details. I know that that's the stuff that matters. And I, I, again, I don't know any of those guys personally. I got nothing against them. Uh, and actually clear value tax. Does anybody know clear value tax? Only, I don't, know, I don't know the guy, I don't know anything good or bad about him, I just know that a lot of people have said they came into my place, uh, my channel, because of Clear Value Tax. Maybe there's a riff with him and Kevin, somebody said. Anyways, but, so let's get back to this. I wanna make sure, keep in mind, I've, got a, I've already shot a video in the field. I'm gonna show you this actual restaurant, I'm gonna show you the houses that I own next door, I'm gonna kinda walk you through all that. Uh, is there any questions on what you've just seen? Have I left something out? Is there something that, that makes you think that I'm leaving something out? I want you to tell me, please. And I, don't, and I gotta look over here to see the, see the stuff here. Okay, you got a 17 year old from Greece. Uh, yeah, I can't talk, I can't advise you on going to college right now. Go to the comments. When this thing's done, I'll talk to you about that stuff. Uh, uh, and looks, folks, if you don't already have my book, and many, many of you do. Look, wake up and smell the real estate. The, I'm gonna raise the cost of this book. Amazon's playing games a little bit with my money. So this is gonna go up. So I advise you to go buy it today if you can get it. It's only 10 bucks on Kindle and 20 bucks on paperback. And just look at the comments, you, people that have bought it. Uh, and many have, it's, it's, it's selling super well. All right, because it's real. A lot of it's real, my story, my life. Okay, so, okay, repeat, please. No, I can't repeat all that. Uh, listen, okay, somebody said, how do you find owner financing for beginners? Guess what? Owner financing applies to everybody in the world, okay? It doesn't matter. Owner financing means the owner agrees to sell to you and let you make payments, and the property is the collateral. If you don't make your payments, you'll take it away. There's also a, a device we call a contract for deed. Now, a contract for deed, if I wanted to sell you something, I thought you were a little sketchy, or I didn't know you, I might sell you something on a contract for deed. This is also good if I had a property that doesn't have assumable financing, because what that is is I make a deal. It's almost like a lease, but it's a contract for a deed, meaning I'm going to give you this property. I'm going to give you the deed for this property when you pay me all the money that is owed to me. But I won't get into contract for deed. That's another video. But, all right. 
Yeah, guys, let's keep it relevant to what we're talking about here. Have I left something out? I got a zillion questions here about not this. Is there anything else I can tell you about? Hard money, okay, quickly, hard money. Listen, hard money, uh, you know, somebody wants to loan you money, I don't care if they want to charge you 20%. Pay it, take it, no big deal, if you have a good deal. Let me put it this way, do I want, if I took a hard money investor on this, and I paid 20% on my $50,000, that means it cost me 10 grand to borrow 50, to make, in this case, 130, it should have been almost half a million, but I had to deal with the crisis that I went through. But regarding crises, because we're in one right now, whether you realize it or not, we're in, a, we're in a crisis right now. When values are dropping, okay, they're dropping. People are losing their jobs, people have lost their jobs, and what does that mean? That means that there's gonna be more properties on the market for sale that are already owned by people that can't make the mortgage. And so, not only, so you can have those going on, and I, I mean, I'm gonna get into this, because believe me, a lot of people don't understand what happens in these situations because they've never faced them before. And I haven't faced COVID, but believe me, we're gonna get some of the problems that happen with bad economy and when things are overbuilt. We're not overbuilt, but we're kind of overbuilt for the amount of income that's coming in right now. But I'll get into that later. So let's get back to the deal. Did the guy next door buy your bar? No, no. I own the property next door. <laughs> I already own the property next door. Uh, yeah, I don't ever want to, because it was bad times, it was hard to lease the restaurant, to be quite honest. Uh, you know, it's just, because it's not, believe me, the, ever, there's, let me tell you what, for, for whatever reason, men generally will have this fantasy, hey, me and my buddies will buy a bar, okay? A lot of bars start with four friends buying a bar, and it ends with four guys that hate each other and one that ends up getting hold in the bag usually. Uh, that's my experience with bars, okay? And so believe me, I saw plenty of guys, yeah, me and my buddies would like to buy the bar. And I'm like, eh, you know, I don't really want to sell it to you, but you know, I mean, I'll listen to you. But ultimately, I, I wanted to see people that ran a clean ship, and because I didn't want the neighborhood to hate me, I didn't want to put some dive in there. And so what I did is I found a couple of guys that already owned three or four bars. I went to their bars, had a drink, had some of the food. I thought, man, these guys run a tight ship. The only thing I wish they did is I wish they continued the live music outside because they don't. But it, it would, I'd go there if there was. I kind of like live music being nearby. Everybody loved it. People would walk to my place from all the surrounding houses, tie their dogs up or bring the, I I'm really not that dog friendly because I don't like dogs fighting on the patio with each other, but people loved it. People would love it, tie their dog to the fence, come inside. I said, no cigars. God, I can't, I don't even like smoking, okay? But cigars, forget it. Somebody lights up a cigar and walks away, you can smell them for three days afterwards. So no cigars, nothing I'm ever gonna have a restaurant, but no cigars on my patio, period. Uh, uh, thanks, David, I appreciate that. So look, I wanna grow the channel. The channel's growing and blowing up fast. So if there's any way you can spread the word by talking to other people that you know that maybe watch some of these other channels, uh, please do so. Please do so. Direct them back. Because in the end, the people that are bored with this conversation that we're having right now are the people that don't really give a crap about real estate. They're not serious about making money, okay? And when you don't care about numbers and you don't care about all these details that I'm talking about, you're not serious, okay? So this isn't the channel for you, okay? It really isn't. you got to be you got to want it, you know, and I can't make anybody want it and I would never even care. I don't care if anybody likes it or not. It, you got to want it. You know, I love real estate. I discovered real estate when I was 19 years old and I've been making nothing but money ever since. It's wonderful, okay? I got four kids. I got my second one's finishing college and I got my two boys are already kicking it on the on stock markets. They're investing in stocks now. And I'm very proud of my boys. And it's not, I don't even know anything about real uh, stocks. I tell them my stock is on my shelves. And I had, I'd be careful about I had to be careful that I wasn't discouraging them. But I'm so proud of them because they're like me in as much as they go into something, they don't know the rules. So they're making up their own rules. And that's what you're gonna find out about me. And 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 if you follow me and if you watch my videos, and I've been making them for years now. But my book, okay, here we go again. I'm gonna prove the book. 
Get my book, the va it's going to be going up, okay? I promise you, I'm going to raise the price. I don't like it. If I raise the price a dollar, people cry. Listen, I'll raise it to whatever I want. But if you want it, get it. If you don't, don't. I don't care. Um, okay. Should I overpay for a personal house? I don't know. I mean, I should never overpay for anything. I don't think I understand the question. Look, that's the other thing. Uh... Uh, what haven't I made money on? You know, I don't know. Somebody asked me if I ever made money on something a while back, and I go, no, I never have. And then about 10 minutes into my video, I go, you know what? I forgot I did. Okay. I've made money on all the basics, land, acreage. You know, it could be a ranch, uh, you know, with a lot of property. Uh, millions, okay, on big property like that I've made. Millions. And I have showed, someday I'm going to show you. There are 180 homes on the, the last big property I sold. Uh, but it doesn't matter. You know, you don't, it, it, just concentrate on what's near your house. I don't care if it's duplexes or industrial property. I don't care what it is. Concentrate on what you're near that you can look at because that's the most convenient to, to get a, a, your scope on, to get your eyes on, is that stuff, okay? Uh, you know, people ask me to mentor all the time and I may mentor, I may mentor, but I'll tell you, the criteria is, it's not even going to be so much about money. It's going to be about, are you serious? Are you willing to do what it takes? Because sometimes I get the stupidest questions, and i got to ferret out the dumb questions. People ask me things like, you know, do I need to be a real estate agent to buy a piece of property? And I understand that at a beginning level, that's fine. But you know what? Just, for God's sakes, watch some videos, and you'll, you, you won't have to ask me such a question. That's the kind of question somebody asks the first day they happen to watch a video. And, you know, just take some time. I've got probably 300 videos I've already made. And some of them are rough. Like, this is kind of rough. But the information is there. And, you know, I do a lot of hemming and hawing. And, you know, I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm by my pool and I'm having a drink and I have to think a little bit, you know. But if you can't put up with that, don't. And some of that stuff, I'm actually going back through it. And I'm, I'm deleting out all the hymns and haws and pauses. And, and there's, sometimes there's interruption, interruptions just from the poor Wi-Fi. But you have to be willing. You have to be interested. Believe me, a lot of you guys are watching right now. You're listening to everything. You're taking notes. I know you are. And you should. That's how you get rich. You think about what you're doing. You've got to think about it. Some people want to just hand their money to somebody else to invest it. You know, like maybe some of the guys in the names in the title here. That ain't how it works. Nobody cares more about money than the guy that owns the money, right? And I, I tell you guys all the time, a fool and his money are soon parted. A fool and his money are soon parted. Happens every day, all the time. You've got to care about your money. That's why I say inherited wealth is the most squandered and screwed up and given away because they didn't earn it. They didn't earn it, so they don't value it. So that first person that says, hey, I got a great idea, you invested in this stock, and then boom, bye-bye. So, all right. So guys, I think the most effective thing for me to do is cut it off here. How long have I been talking? Can somebody tell? I can't even tell. Oh, God. Has it been over an hour? I don't even know. Let me look here. Okay, 40 minutes. All right, I'll take a couple questions here. Okay. You, well, look, you paid cash for a duplex. You should be able to borrow some money against that property. You should be able to get some equity out of it. I would just say, don't take any more equity. You can get a line of credit. Okay, this is a good question. He says he bought a duplex, he paid cash for it. Now, so let me tell you what I did. I bought, I, I did a 1031. So if you don't know what that is, it's where you take the sale of one property, and you take all the proceeds and you go into another. Well, I did that. And I put a million one down on a property I bought for a million two. So I had a property for a million two with you know, a $1.1 million in, in equity. Okay, I had like 90% equity, a little more. I immediately, at the same time actually, made a deal with the bank that, to give me a line of credit. I think it was for six, seven, maybe $800,000. So on day one, when I closed that deal, I had 110 or 1.1 million equity, and I had a, a line of credit for like eight or nine hundred thousand that had a hundred thousand used, which was the difference of what I bought the property for. So 
day one, I closed a deal and I had like an $800,000 line of credit. I took that $800,000 and I bought more great deals and made more big profits. And then just same thing. I kept the ones that I want that were really cash flowed. The other ones I just flipped and, and made my cash. You know, I don't flip everything. I, I'll flip anything for a profit. But there's a lot of properties like the one I'm standing in. I mean, I, I keep stuff that I like, that I, that, you know, that I like, that's easy to maintain. You know, I like commercial office, industrial, uh, you know, residential to me. I, if you, you have to watch my other videos, you'll know why I don't keep it very long. And I, I you know, once it becomes over $300,000 in value, I sell it. it. They just don't bring enough return anymore. So again, look, please share my channel out if you like what you hear. Subscribe. We're going to end up having a little VIP club here, particularly the people that buy my book. And we may do some mentoring. It'll be very limited. I'm only going to, and it's not about how much money you got. It's going to be how serious you are. And so I'll get something up there because I know some of you, I'm, believe me, people have been asking me for a long time, but it's going through the roof. I'm going through hundreds of emails every week and I feel bad when there's a question, you know, I can't read two pages of stuff, uh, you know, when I've got 200 more emails to read. Uh, all right, so let's get to questions here. Renting a property in a small town produces little rent, which is not, yeah, that was a bad idea to buy. You, you listen, if you can't pay the rent, don't buy it. It just doesn't make any sense. Never buy a property that doesn't pay for itself. And a lot of people just are like, you know, they buy a property and then maybe they put 20% down and they're happy that the mortgage is covered with their payment, with their rent. That's a terrible deal. That's a terrible deal. I want to make money on the, the money that I put down. Okay, I want to return on my down payment plus I want an equal return on the rest of the money that I bought. So let's just say I, I want 15%. I want 15% on the 20 grand that I put down on a $100,000 purchase, okay? Then I want 15% on the 80,000 that I borrowed, okay? Now I may have to pay three to 5% on what I borrowed, but that means I should get 12% on the 80% I borrowed, and I should get, you know, 15% uh, on the money that, that was mine, that I put down. If you're not doing that good, don't buy it, don't buy it. Now, if you're gonna, now, let me back this up a little bit. When it comes to a house, that's a little different. That's why I don't hold houses. I get rid of homes that I own that are, that are rentals as they get close to being worth 300,000. It's because the return on the, the amount of value gets worse and worse. The rents don't go up as fast as the value of the home proportionately. So at some point, it just doesn't make sense, okay? So one of the reasons I was critical of Meet Kevin video and a couple of people that wrote in were arguing because they don't know what the hell they're doing. And because they don't know what the hell they're doing, they, you know, and, and, you know, and some people I just don't even care. Just, I just say, watch videos and figure it out. I'm not going to explain it to you. I just ex already expressed it. Anyways, but I could, I could buy a house for $400,000 that's worth $600,000 and I'd sell it immediately. And it, because I'm not buying it to rent it. I'm buying it just to make that, that margin, to make that profit. So that I would flip. That I would buy clothes or maybe I just buy, tie it up and do an assignment and make 50 grand. Uh, and certainly right now, I can tell you, in these times right now, you don't know, the market's going down. The values are going down. I guarantee it. And, go to, and those of you that have my book, go to chapter 27, okay? Chapter 27, read it 10 times. It's simple, but it's very important to know right now. Read it, read it, use it. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to get back to your questions. This thing's scrolling on me. Uh, okay, thoughts on doing entire estate buyouts? You know, that's an interesting question, Izzy, because I've actually thought about putting up eight of my houses up for sale together for one buyer, for just one buyer. You know, and so I'm thinking it's, you know, it's not my whole estate, it's not a death, but it's a nice big chunk, it's a, it's a portfolio. So I may try to sell my portfolio like that. Uh, okay, yeah, look, it doesn't, look, I, his, I got a question. Is it possible to make a profit on a property in Belgium? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how expensive the neighborhood you live in, it doesn't matter. You're, you're basing, making a deal relative to the price it is, right? You know, I, I could make a little, you know, gauge here, okay? Now this could mean, you know, uh, this could mean, you know, uh, uh, one million, okay? 
That could be one million, or it could be a hundred, a uh, hundred thousand. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how expensive it is. Okay, what matters is is that you're not buying up here near the top of what it's worth. You got to buy down here. Okay, you need like 35, 35 percent below market. You know, you you know, I mean, in really good times, you could maybe get away with 25 to 30. But something like COVID comes in and slaps you down. You better sell it immediately. Like I say, even this COVID stuff, people, you know, when it first came out, you know, the, believe me, next time it comes out, a lot of us will be a lot smarter and go, God, I got to get out of this right now. And believe me, I'm selling houses, but I, w I wish I had to put the gas on it, you know, a little, a little earlier. Uh, but I'm doing what I know, what I know I need to do. And I'll talk more about that after I get it all done too. But I'll tell you right now, be careful about buying anything right now. You don't know what the bottom is. You know, I've heard a couple of these guys that are in the title talk about, ah, real estate's not doing anything. It's, it's staying even. It hasn't gone down. Well, everything's been frozen. Things can't go down when it's frozen. But guess what? Inside everybody's minds, they're bottom feeders. They're not, they're gonna, they're not gonna buy. They're not gonna buy. You can't reference, gee, nothing's gone down when nothing's been for sale, it's been frozen. So anyways, I think this is a great time to kill it. So I'm gonna call it quits right now. Uh, yep. Anyways, listen, just go to, just go to Amazon. I can't tell you what devices it works on. I just know you can get my book on Amazon and you can get it on Kindle, which Amazon also handles, I believe. All right. I'll take one more question. Make it a good one. Uh, yeah, I can't, I don't know about India. If you can buy property and resell it. Yeah, it works. You know what? Go to go to uh, two thousand books. Two thousand books. Uh, uh, M Manny Vea, great guy, great channel, real smart, real intellectual guy. He's from India, and he's had me on his show as an interview, and he loves my book. Actually, endorsed it. Ask him. He, I, he might even be in India right now. Uh, yeah, commercial versus residential. Commercial, you can hold. Uh, residential, flip. Okay, that's my advice on commercial and residential. Uh, my book covers everything you need to know. Yeah, Gabriel, you know, I'm, I've made some sales. I've sold two houses in the last two days. I got six more to go. Remember I had five houses I was selling? Now I'm selling eight, okay? Now I'm selling eight. All right. I guess that's where I'm going to end it, guys. So, hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to share, subscribe. Please like this thing, like this thing right now. I mean, not a lot of people watching, not nearly as many likes as there are watchers. Come on, hit that like button. Uh, and subscribe, subscribe, okay? If you are serious about making money in real estate, subscribe, okay? Or if, if you don't like me, then don't subscribe. Just hit, take it off right now, never come back. Uh, but I, I'm trying to be as honest with you. I, I, I expect these videos to be a blueprint for my kids to follow, okay? So I promise you, I am giving you, I'm talking to you just like your family. And just like my book, if you read my book, you'll know right away, I talk to you just like your family or a good friend. Anyhow, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, <laughs> take care.